Hello everyone, I am Bonnie Lo Kramen. So here we are on January 20th, Martin Luther King Day, and I want to talk about an article that hit in the Wall Street Journal on Saturday. It was called The Vanishing Executive Assistant. So um, it's caused a huge stir on LinkedIn. Let me just show you. The headline. This was the actual. Uh, this was a screenshot from the from the article, and the first line caused such a uh, commotion on LinkedIn. Executive assistants once ran the office. Increasingly, the office runs without them. And um, needless to say, this caused a lot of conversation over this weekend. And then I put an arrow. You'll notice that. That article on the Wall Street Journal, in the Wall Street Journal, received 289 comments, and they were still coming in. Uh, I added my comments, but it was amazing to me. So, there, I thought to talk about this article and also some of the comments that came underneath the article. The thread was truly a snapshot of how this role is being perceived by people all over the country. Fascinating stuff. Um, and and it really gives me insight to uh, some of the battles we're actually fighting in terms of the perception of this role. Uh, you, many of the comments had, uh, you know, were kind of um, stuck in the old perceptions of secretaries fetching coffee and doing typing and filing and uh, and it was all over the map you know and then there were some really evolved commentary from leaders who see the absolute value of assistance and and looked at this article and was hor and were horrified you know like please don't take away the executive assistance so you know um, yeah so that's what I'm going to be talking about for this next few minutes. Those of you who don't know me very well, I'm Bonnie Lo Craman. Uh, for 25 years, I worked as the personal assistant to the actress Olympia Dukakis and her husband Louis Zorich. And then in 2011, I left that work in order to go off and teach and speak. And, and at this point, I've been um, all over the world. But I, I wanted to share uh, these photographs of Olympia and me with you because I, it is partially from Olympia that I learned to see an article like the one that appeared in the Wall Street Journal and to take it with a grain of salt and to question and to speak up to it, to reveal what is wrong with it. So. Um, I did reach out to the writer of the article and I did reach out to a person who's even mentioned in the article. So it, it was really an interesting couple of days as as uh, social media kind of blew up over all of this. And so I'm grateful to Olympia for always urging me to speak my mind. And I certainly did in this case. Uh, this is an image of, of some of the places I've been in the last nine years since leaving Olympia, 14 countries, 38 states. And it is that uh, knowledge, that perspective that I was able to respond to this article. And of course, in, in the work I'm doing, I'm talking with recruiters and HR professionals and leaders and certainly assistants just like you from all over the world. So. Um, I felt on very solid ground as I responded to the journal article. One of the things the article said is that these jobs are disappearing, that the jobs for executive assistants are disappearing at a very rapid pace. And oh my goodness, what's going to happen to all these women? You know, they pointed out that the profession is 95% women and what are all of these women going to do who don't have college degrees and what will their jobs be? Well, I'm here to tell you that the demand 
for executive assistance is very high in 2020. That from the information I have from recruiters all over the United States, the fact is that there are more jobs for executive assistance right now than there are people to fill those jobs. So um, HR professionals are working hard to retain the top talent that they have. And what that is also causing is um, a phenomenon known as pay equity and pay transparency. We've heard from many uh, Be the Ultimate Assistant students. Um, on the screen is our picture from BTUA in Boston uh, from September. And one of the things we're hearing is that companies are doing a voluntary pay evaluation of the assistant staff, actually all staff, and some assistants are just receiving automatic increases as a way to incentivize them to stay. And in some cases it's working, in some cases they're going on to other companies and making even more money. Um, true story, a, a recruiter in the Bay Area just emailed me to tell me that she was very excited that she was able to place an executive assistant in the last few months of 2019, starting salary 160,000 a year. And that is not a one-off. This is happening across the United States. So, okay, so, you know, why did this article even happen? It's that the title of the article was wrong, that it's administrative assistants, the lower level positions, the receptionists, the um, any uh, assistant who is doing a task that could now be automated or uh, enabled through artificial intelligence, those jobs are on the decline. The jobs for executive assistants is on the upswing though, that there's a very high demand for these roles. The article referenced the Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor as a resource for these numbers. And what's interesting about that is that I too was looking for data from the Department of Labor and I'm involved in a task force because what we realized is that the Department of Labor only has two job designations for this role, administrative, assistants and executive assistants and the job category uh, it's referred to as a job family the job family that does not exist in the department of labor's documentation is c-suite executive assistant uh, other and now we know that the title is changing throughout the country google has kind of led the way to make this change uh, to executive business partner and uh, certainly the Department of Labor doesn't have that there yet. Um, on this task force, we learned that the Department of Labor will be updating their records uh, in about 2024. So we've got a ways to go, but that would explain why there's a confusion and a disconnect between what they, some people think is happening and what is really happening. Uh, so I hope if anyone is listening from the Department of Labor that feel free to contact me and we can, uh, you know, update this because here's the thing, C-suite executive assistants who are supporting CEOs and executive VPs up in the C-suite uh, are making six figures, their starting salaries are in the neighborhood of 110, you know, give or take, but those, that data does not exist right now um, with the Department of Labor, but we know that it exists. We're, it's just a very interesting time right now with what's going on. If you don't have an assistant, you are one. Cameron Harold said this, um, you know, there was, there were many responses to this article and in, and I read so many of them in the thread 
of comments on this article, there were many from executives who said, oh yeah, I outsource all of my assistant work. I pay $6 an hour to people in the Philippines or uh, another other executives would say, oh, I do my all my own stuff. I don't need an assistant to do my correspondence and my calendaring and and all of that. And I read that and I and I thought of this quote by Cameron because it's true. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. The what we all get every single day is 24 hours. And that's it. It doesn't matter who you are. So my question to these executives, if I had them in front of me, would be, well, just because you know how to do all of this administrative work, is that necessarily the best use of your time? And if you calculate the per hour fee that, that they're actually paying to do their administrative work, it really isn't logical. I mean, I'm sure in some cases it is uh, for the control freaks and the, you know, um, among folks who don't want to uh, give up any responsibility. However, I think it is very limiting on how much you can scale your operation if a single person is doing all of the work themselves. I mean, I'm not a big business at all and I have an assistant 20 hours a week and to enable me to, to do the things that I really want to do. Um, and I, I speak with executives all the time and I'm thinking of a particular CEO who I had a conversation with just a month or two ago. And she said, you know, Bonnie, I have to be honest about the things I'm not good at and job those out, or, you know, give those to my assistants and let me do the thing that the board has hired me to do and that I'm uniquely qualified to do. And I'm going to permit my staff to do the things that they're, that they're really good at. So, you know, the responses to this article uh, was that fact that I hear all over the world as I travel with BTUA and that a lot of assistants are complaining, yeah, my, my executive wants to do everything himself or herself. And you, uh, technology has made some things easier, but not everything. So that's a conversation that really does need to continue about what the true value is of this role as assistants as executive business partners. Um, here's something else, you know, bullying and sexual harassment. It might seem like totally off topic, right? But many of the comments in the thread made an interesting point, which happens to be true, is that um, they commented that bullying and sexual harassment and also the wage gap paying people poorly are contributing factors to the reduction of executive assistance. And the truth is that these kind of toxic behaviors are chasing good people away. Absolutely true. I hear from many of them who want my help to help find a new job because they're being bullied or sexually harassed or paid so poorly. And in this job market, it is possible to find new work. So I wanted to raise this um, on this um, on this recording so that you hear very clearly that more and more HR directors and leaders are creating new policies against bullying and sexual harassment. And, and as I just shared before, there's a very big conversation going on right now about money and about salary and making it a priority and front of mind to pay people fairly. So if you have more questions about that, I welcome you to circle back with me. So, um, you know, what was clear in the article was that 
there's a lot of old perceptions that are dying very hard. And the reality is the profession still is 95 to 98% female. But what I see all over the world is that more men are entering the profession. And that's a great thing. You know, the data is clear that a more diverse group, as you can see in the picture, that's our Boston group again, um, is a, a more diverse group is a, is a stronger one, a, a more creative one, um, a more innovative one. And so we want multi-ages, multi-ethnicities. We need men and women. Uh, we need all kinds of backgrounds because diversity is a very good thing. So we certainly want that to be the case. And, and I'm certainly doing everything I can to, uh, to paint this as a profession with a future, as opposed to this article, which says it's dying, which is certainly not helping um, the, the, the PR for this. Uh, and, you know, titles are changing and we're moving out of the word a secretary is long gone and the word assistant is being phased out in many, many, many companies. So with titles changing and salaries rising, that is very attractive to men. And we want that to happen for both men and women. Uh, the, uh, the thread of comments also made reference to the changing workplace with so many assistants working virtually and remotely. And so why would you need an assistant in the office if the executive is off running around the world? And that's true. Um, <clears throat> we have many assistants who are working out of their home office one or more days a week. Um, there are all kinds of ways to work in 2020. It does not mean, however, that the role is of less value. In fact, it is in many cases of more value when you have executives on the road and you have a capable assistant, whether she or he is at home or in the office, uh, taking care of business, you know? So that that's just the changing landscape. Then there was this whole thing about do you have a college degree or you don't have a college degree? Many assistants in our country do not hold a college degree. They have succeeded and learned on the job. They have succeeded in spite of the lack of training historically. Um, and they really don't need a degree as long as they've kept up to speed with workshops and classes that are relevant and specific to their role. So, um, you know, in the thread, there was all of this conversation about, you know, how executive assistants need a college degree. And actually, they don't. They don't necessarily need a degree depending on their role. And in fact, um, in my response on LinkedIn, there was an article just a few weeks ago saying how many companies are no longer insisting requiring a college degree. And, and here's an interesting thing about that. As those of you who know me know, I'm pretty obsessed with the differences between men and women and how we think and the, the gender differences in the workplace. And the data on this point is clear about job descriptions that women will read a job description and believe that they need to have 100% of all the requirements in order to apply. And with men, it's in the neighborhood of 60 to 65% of men will apply for a job even if they don't fill all the requirements. And so if a job description says college degree required, that will knock out of the box so many women from even applying for the job. So if anybody's hearing this and you know, you're thinking about this issue, you might want to say a college degree is preferred, but not required. And that will not 
discourage, uh, it may discourage some, but not discourage all women from applying. And then annual training budgets, training, 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 training. Historically, this role of assisting has not required training. It certainly does now. I mean, so many of the assistants who come to BTUA know the feeling of winging it every single day and having to fight for training dollars. It just has not really been the norm, but now it is. Now it, in 2020, professional development for executive assistants and every level of administration really does require ongoing, continuous annual training. And to that end, more and more assistants are being successful in getting annual training budgets in order to stay relevant and on top of their game. It is not uncommon for uh, some assistants in certain roles to be able to justify going for an MBA if that is relevant to their role. As executive business partners, it's totally realistic and reasonable if it is specific to the role you're doing. Uh, to have your company pay for a degree, if that is something A, you want, and B, it is relevant to the role. But in addition to that, there are you know, so many conferences and workshops and online training, virtual training, uh, and in-person events. You know, every assistant on the planet knows that this is a business of relationships. So the networking is critical. Networking not only for ourselves as assistants, but on behalf of our executives. And the smartest executives out there know this. So interesting to read this thread and to um, see the gamut of ideas about the people who do this role. Some of these executives really understood the absolute necessity for a person who functions as their right arm and the backbone of the company and the eyes and the ears and the glue and all of these adjectives that are used for this role. Um, on my LinkedIn response, I, I linked to a podcast episode uh, that, that the Executive Leadership Support Forum did. Um, I interviewed uh, the CEO, Gary Rabine, and I asked him on this podcast, you know, how much more profitable are you, do you think, having your executive assistant with you and working alongside you? And after thinking about it, he said, I think two to three times more profitable. Like, really? <laughs> he was deadly serious. And that is happening all over the world. To fully leverage the skills and talents of a carefully selected, highly skilled assistant can be exponential for an executive who's really looking to make the most of, of his or her time to enable that executive to do the things that only they should be doing and, and to allow an assistant to support them with everything else. Oh, there's so much to say about this. So for those of you listening, I urge you to speak truth to power, to find ways to speak to your leaders about how to fully leverage you, uh, because you know what? It's not being taught in business school. In business schools, they're teaching, you know, macroeconomics and statistics and accounting, et cetera, and they're not teaching MBA students about the value of support staff and how to manage that support staff. So we then as assistants need to manage our managers. And you know what they uh, executives tell me, they want you to, they need you to. We have an obligation to teach our executives how to use us. Job description equals money. I shared with you that 
salaries are going up all over the, over the United States. This job is definitely not going away. Here's the thing though. The job of assistance is to create a written job description that is accurate and detailed because those details equate to number of hours that you're working each week, including nights and weekends. And that level of responsibility will be articulated in a job description. And that, my friends, is your justification for the salary you're making. It's as simple as that. What, what tasks, what projects are you fulfilling? What value do you bring to the table each and every day? And the answer to those questions will equate to a more fair salary. If you need some data about salaries, PESA.com is a great website to check. PESA, P-A-Y-S-A.com. You can certainly go to Indeed and Glassdoor and all of that, but uh, I will support you to make the money you deserve. Never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. In fact, it is the only thing that ever has. I'm here to tell you that the assistants of the world who are functioning as executive business partners to their executives are changing the world. They're changing the world of their companies and of their departments. Um, I'm encouraged by what I see all over the world because assistants, when they truly understand, truly understand their value, which comes from putting down the job description and really uh, being honest about what role they're filling in the company, you bear great power and influence and you are leaders who are not going away. Uh, AI will be your tool. And if AI hasn't already entered your uh, place of business, it probably will very, very soon. Well, I hope this has been useful in some way. I just had to kind of flesh out some of the issues that were talked about in this um, in this article, I want to be a resource for you. Um, I hear about so many jobs through the country and I am eager to share resources with the assistant community, with the leaders you support, with the HR team at your companies and the recruiters who are doing such fine work in this space. Uh, it, it, so connect with me on whatever platform is your favorite, but I certainly hope you will check out uh, my website, betheultimateassistant.com because we have to be in this thing together and help change perception together. Uh, I'm hoping to have a conversation with the writer of that article. And, you know, they were talking about a, a, a woman in the article who was having trouble finding new work. And she was is based in Brooklyn, New York. And I mean, my goodness, there are so many jobs in the in the tri-state area. I reached out to her to offer help. And the good news is you'll be happy to hear that um, she is employed. So I hope you'll read the article and know that that's happening. Our move for the future is to mentor one another, to collaborate, to cooperate and partner with one another. We must share information just like this. So I, I look forward to staying in touch. Please do link in with me. Um, I hope you'll consider coming to a Be The Ultimate Assistant workshop in 2020 that I teach with the amazing technology expert, uh, Vicki Sokol Evans of Red Cape. Um, she teaches three and a half hours of Microsoft Office technology in our workshop. So uh, we're in our ninth year. I'm very proud about that. So I wish you all the best um, as we move forward to shape 
a perception that is accurate and real um, and true. So see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.